Hi everybody, I'm Tina and welcome today to this very special episode of the Summer Solstice uh, Star Tutorial. <laughs> So what I wanted to do today was not only show you how to make these pretty little stars, the mosaic stars, uh, I also wanted to show you what it's like here in Reykjavik, Iceland during uh, midsummer and we have the midnight sun. There's no sun now. It's been very cloudy and raining all day long, but it is actually, I know I don't know if you heard the, the bells ring and it's actually 2 a.m. in the morning. So uh, I wanted to show you guys what it's like here. It's so nice in summer, like the sun really just never sat and uh, it's not like sun that that will you know be warm or anything sun in Iceland rarely is actually <laughs> but it's just it gives this light and this light this summer uh, this summer sun the midnight sun just gives this it doesn't just give light it gives just a wonderful energy I don't I don't know how to explain it but it really just gives you this pump of energy and light into your life and I absolutely adore it so I really want to share that with you guys and maybe if you guys have experienced it maybe been somewhere up north in summertime then maybe leave a comment be below and tell me about your experience because I really I absolutely love this time of year and I really wanted to share yet, share that with you guys it's actually uh, quite bright yes but it's really cold as well so I'm freezing my butt up over here and I want to show you these the stars and like be outside and what have you and then it's just really windy and very cold but I'm powering through <laughs> so what I'm going to show you here today in the tutorial is how to make my mosaic stars and I usually will make these for Christmas actually, but now I just wanted to make some colorful ones and make this uh, wind chime. As you can see, there's lots of wind, so there's lots of movement. And I absolutely love making these. And this is such a quick, fun make. And you can make them and make a wind chime like these, or you can make just sets of three and hang them in your window or in your garden even. I put some up in the tree behind me. I don't know if you can see them, but uh, it's beautiful for garden or balconies or every every type of like splash of color in your green areas in, in your life. And uh, like I said, I, I do tend to make these for Christmas and I'm going to show you there are, it's just the same pattern really but it's four sizes and then I also show you how to make these here when I mount them onto hoops which I really like and these are actually really nice for Christmas ornaments as well so these make them very proper and these are just bangles again thrifting you guys you know the charity shops go hit them and, and get those old bangles and and upcycle a bit but uh, yeah I think that's it for now I'm really cold <laughs> It's very windy, uh, but I hope that you liked seeing just a glimpse of downtown Reykjavik here. This is the lake in the in the in the center of the city, just close to where I live, and it's so beautiful and peaceful. And you know, even though it's uh, it's cold, it's full of lights and energy, which you only get up here. Or I think that you you know, it's quite special the energy you get here on our northern summer nights. So. <laughs> getting attacked <laughs> so let's get to it oh yeah no 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 i forgot uh, i'm doing a sale as well i was doing so at my annual uh, summer solstice sale uh, i have a sale going in my ravelry shop now from the 21st until the end of month till the end of june and all my patterns are 30 percent off so you know go and shop away you guys uh to celebrate the summer solstice so happy solstice you guys and let's get to it i'm gonna show you how to make my little stars i hope you like it and crochet along okay so let's get started with the mosaic stars i absolutely love these i usually make these for christmas Obviously, they're very Christmassy when you do those, do them in these colors, in, in Christmas colors. But this time I actually decided on making them for summer garden sort of happy, happy stars. <laughs> uh, and so what we have here is actually, it's quite simple to make. And the original uh, mosaic star is this one here, which is six rounds this one is one of those and this here as well and this one is as well so as you can see it really changes these are all the same four colors that i'm using but it really changes the look of them with the way that you arrange the colors so it's really great fun to to play with i mean i love making these i just 
stopped it working. I was going to make the video. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to make a couple and just, you know, get into the groove and get some nice samples and what have you. Well, I've made over 40 <laughs> and I just started filming now <laughs> because they're really fun. They're kind of addictive. So, uh, and this is also another great, you know, on the go light summer project. So I noticed that you like the purses. So I thought I would bring you something something else like this. So this is the original, which is size, uh, six rounds. And then you can play with these and make them in four sizes, uh, just uh, making fewer rounds. So this is the six rounds one. This one here has five rounds. I love this one here when you just took it with two colors and it looks really like, like a pinwheel. And this one here is, so you see how much difference the, the color arrangement does. So it's really just endless play uh, fun 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 and games with the color play this one here is yeah that's the five round one and then you have the one that is four rounds like this you see and then you can go as small as three rounds actually which is quite fun <laughs> they're so cute these small ones <laughs> ah, easy dee, 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 dee. and and these are, I mean, it's it's great fun also to do them in different sizes. And then I kind of, I string, I, I tend to string mines up in pairs of two or threes. And then have them as, um, I put them up on the wall, like together like this, for example. Or in the window or something. So, yeah, and then that's the other, the part. Uh, I love making these into, working them onto these little bangles. Like, these are bracelets. You see, I have a loads of these here. Again, uh, this is excellent thrift shop thing. You get these really cheap at the thrift shops and uh, or just, you know, at a whatever, like H&M or whatever. Do take care when you're shopping for those. These are usually standard seven centimeters. That's like, I don't know, like two and a half, 2.7 inches. Uh, and it's just a standard bracelet, you know. You'll find these everywhere in H&M or thrift shops or even maybe have some in your closet. Uh, and now you can find um, use for it. So these are, um, I think it's really fun to use these because they, 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 they become very proper when you work them up on this and especially for uh, Christmas tree ornament, you guys. It's, it's, you know, once you put them up on these, then they're just like really proper ornaments, aren't they? So I really like these. And what, there's only a couple of things that I would like to mention when buying your bangles which is talking with experience. Do not buy the ones that come together like five in a set. Sometimes they're all, they're, um, they're uh, interlaced. They're like uh, stuck together. That's not, we can't use those. And then there's another type that's quite nasty. Uh, I sometimes buy these by accident and these are like, they're not, you can, you can, they're not firm. You can do like this. We don't want these. So if you're buying them at the thrift shops, for example, just take care to, Give them a good squeeze and see that they're firm and then they won't change their circular, perfect circular form. So uh, for the ones that I work up on the bangles, then when I'm using uh, what I usually use, again, Katona, I always use Katona for these kinds of stuff. It's my favorite uh, cotton yarn. So these are, you know, it's not that fine cotton you can use. I use a hook number 2.5 for these. Uh, so if I'm using Katona, then I can only manage to make four rounds so that they'll fit the um, the bangle. Okay, so the ones that go onto the bangle are gonna be the four rounds one. Or if not, you could make these in um, finer yarn and then you can manage to, you see this one here, I did with the the Maxi Sweet Treat from Shepes and then you have to use like a needle 1.5 and this one actually fits onto this one, which is a bit smaller than the others or what? No, it's pretty much the same. So if you use finer yarn, this also depends on your tension. So you just have to really try and see what happens. But I really like these in like this really fine yarn as well, because then they really are so delicate and, you know, <laughs> yes, I think they're very nice. I think my work is very nice. <laughs> I mean, if I'm not happy with it, who's going to be? So this is another one that's going to go up on the wall or in the window, I think. I love making these like in threes because as we know, three is the magic number. Okay, what more? What more? I'm not being very um, organized at telling you what we need. 
Okay, what do we need to make the stars? We need at least two colors of cotton. I, I really recommend cotton for this, you guys, because if you'll use wool or acrylics, they have sort of much more um, hairy um, texture. So when you apply the stiffening, uh, the fabric stiffener, then it's just not nice. So definitely go with cotton, but you can use any cotton you like. I do re recommend the Katona as always, because that, that's my favorite ones. And again, I love it love to use with the uh, work with these mini skeins because then you can use all sorts of colors so you need two two um colors at least i recommend way more and the katona is it's recommended for a 2.5 to 3.5 millimeter hook i use my 2.5 for this one because i really want it to be quite tight two colors of yarn you need your hook 2.5 millimeters so something that suits your yarn then you need the fabric stiffener and so I will use this one here from Mod Podge, which is called, very inappropriately called, <laughs> Stiffy. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, powering through. Uh, you need the Stiffy. Uh, this is, uh, I love using this, uh, but I guess it's, uh, you know, it's, um, I don't know if it's pricey or not. I don't know. Um, but it, a more economic solution to this is also just using, I think you call, call this in English PVA glue. It's, we call this in, East, in Icelandic wood glue. <laughs> the girls had such a laugh at me when I was telling them, asking, how do I say wood glue? Okay, so we have the stiffy and we have the wood glue. So the PVA glue is, uh, you can use that as well and just mix it with a bit of water to get it to be... Uh, a bit diluted. So that would be a more economic uh, solution, I suppose. I will use this always. Uh, it's lovely. And um, I mean, you use quite a lot of it, but I think from one one um, bottle like this, I will get at least, you know, maybe 50 stars or something. So it's, it's um, you know, and, um, and then you need your bangles. Again, thrifting, always. Wah, bah, 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 bah. If you're gonna do those kinds <coughs> to string them up or to string them together i use this uh, fishing line uh, and do take care to get the one i mean you can use yarn as well i just like using the fishing lines because then they're totally see-through and you can't really see them so it's very neat uh, do take care to get the ones that are quite thin because otherwise they will get uh, stiff <laughs> Okay, this is going to be an ongoing joke. Uh, they will be too stiff. They will be sort of like, it's better to have the thin ones. Just, you know, mark my words. Uh, yeah, fishing line for stringing them up or stringing them together. What more, what more? Ah, yeah, uh, you will need a blocking mat like this. And I put baking paper on mine and just pin it from the, the wrong side onto it so that when I apply my my stiffener uh it was it doesn't ruin because this is basically just glue so it doesn't ruin my my uh, my blocking mat for later purposes where i'm just using water as normally and obviously you need some um uh of these uh, uh what do you call these uh, needles to pin them down and i do recommend the ones that have a bit of a bubble here at the end because then they can sometimes get a bit stuck in with the glue so it's it's definitely way nicer to use those but i mean the other ones will do I think that's it. Okay. And of course, just, uh, you know, lots of colors. <laughs> oh, see my cotton stash. I just uh, reorganized it. Very happy. Such fun, such fun. Ah, yes. And of course, no, no, no. I was uh, distracted with the colors. <laughs> Never happens. You need also a small ball uh, for the the fabric stiffener to put into and a large pencil. I like to have it quite large because we're really going to just, you, you want to apply a lot of it uh, and fast sort of. So I like to have these, um, these white big pencils. Uh, yes, that's it then. The stiffener, these here, hook, yarn and some bangles if you want. And you know, a sewing needle and scissors, but that's basic. So uh, let's get to it. I can't wait to show you how to make these. They are such fun and so many possibilities. Wind chimes, sort of decorations in your garden. And then obviously it's never too late to start working for you on your Christmas presents. And uh, these do make lovely Christmas presents and also decorations for the for the, the 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 packages. Oh, my God, I'm getting excited. I love Christmas. OK, but it's just July, June. OK, OK, focus. OK, let's do this. OK, 
So we're gonna get started. I'm gonna start by showing you the big star and then I'll show you all the smaller variation. You just do a little tweak at the last round to make those. But this is the basic one, the, the mother of all stars. <laughs> and so I'm gonna show you the colors that I'm gonna use. Now you can use, you know, all kinds of colors, obviously just the ones that you like. I've picked out some of my favorites here and um, there are a few tricks. I know that I, I always get these questions about how to pick colors and for me this is just fun, but for some people this is stressful. So I'm gonna share with you a few tricks. Uh, so first of all, I always want to have like here, I uh, the, the big star is six rounds. So I'm just gonna use all six colors possible. You can do them with just two, but I like to have more. So what I've done here is that I've sort of um, selected the main theme, which is the teal. Okay, so these are this is like bright teal, this is like dark blue teal, and then there's turquoise, which is sort of like the same. Yeah, so this is the main color basically, and this one here goes so well with it. It's almost teal. it's like tealish uh, gray, like just a bit of hue of of blue in this gray. This is one of my favorite colors in from Shepazep, actually, it's a uh, color, it doesn't say, 402. And then what you want is you want to have some bright colors. And when I say what you want, I say what I mean, what I mean, what I want. I always want to have some bright colors, like very bright ones, like this bright uh, green here. And this one is quite bright as well. And this one as well. But then I want one contrast color that's in the opposite family as well. So I have this uh, sort of um, sort of like orangey brown which is, um, you know, the, the opposite color to blue is orange. So I'll use that one. And then I want, and it's also earthy. You want some that are like earthy or darker like this. And then I have one that is sort of neutral. And the thing with the neutral is that if you just make them really bright, all the colors, I mean, that's fine if you want that. But I really like to, like here, for example, in all of these, I always used the this uh, gray one here with them to sort of, that just makes the other colors pop more, you know? So it is important, I think, to have one that is quite dark, one that is a bit earthy, and then one that is sort of neutral. So, but these are my, you know, just my go-to sort of tricks and, um, you know, you do what you want and just experiment because it's great fun. And also one more thing, when you're doing this, um, this uh, big star, then it's quite cool actually to have round four and six in sort of similar colors, because then you get this here, sort of uh, um, extra sort of star inside of the star. Mm, I don't know if I have more where I use this, but I'm gonna do it here now so that you see, but it's not, it's not, um, it's not something you have to do, but I do think it's nice that these two play nicely together. And obviously the last row color, the last round color is going to be sort of the most, um, uh, what you call, like the, the one that's uh, sort of the color of the star, you know, it's the the, the, the biggest color. Okay, I'm just going to stop talking and start crocheting. <laughs> the most uh, important color, sort of like the, uh, yeah, I, I, I trust that you understand what I'm saying. Okay, so these are going to be my colors and I'm going to start here with the green, the pop of green here in the middle and we're going to do round one for the big star. And we start, and I'm using my 2.5 millimeter hook. And we start by doing the um, uh, magic circle. And you can substitute this with three chains if you're not a fan of the mag magic circle. But I always use that so we can, um, so you can completely close the middle. And we're gonna start by working into our magic circle. Get the yarn up here and do two chains. Okay. And this one sort of um, serves as our first half double crochet uh, because we're going to do the invisible join over it and then that will uh, count as a stitch. And then we're going to do 11 half double crochets into the magic circle. Okay, and the half double crochets is just yarn over, go in, get your yarn up, then there's through three loops up on your hook and then yarn over and go through all three. Okay, three, four, five and take care when working the magic circle always to be working over your tail otherwise it doesn't work where was i going to five six seven nine ten and eleven okay 
and then you cut the yarn and you're going to pull your yarn all the way up of the last loop like so whoop a whoop <laughs> And then we're going to pull on the on the tail from the magic circle and we're going to take it together completely like so. This is magical. This is why it's called the magic circle. Oop. Oop. And you see there is no hole in the middle. And I just like to actually get it out of the way with this first round to do all my tails in. So I will first thread the tail that we cut at the end of last the last half double crochet and we're going to join with the invisible join okay and that we're going to do that over our chains that are here and into the first half double crochet of the of the round so you thread your needle and then you're going to go from the front under both loops here of the first half double crochet of the round yeah and pull there through like so and then you're going to do the second movement, which is to go into the middle, just under the back loop here of this last half double crochet of the round that we did, like so. And we get a perfect stitch there. So that's the 12th stitch of the round, really. So we have 12 half double crochets here, or, you know, one fake one, but full one if you want to be fancy. I was just... Go to French if you want to be fancy, you know, and then we're going to weave in our ends. And we don't actually need to be very meticulous about weaving in the ends in this because we're going to be stiffening it. And uh, so there's, you know, nothing's going to get unraveled. It's actually, you know, it's really, it's uh, quite hard once you, <laughs> there's, it's, it's, I don't know, this, could, this cannot get unraveled. It's just impossible. Okay, and the second end here to weave in, which is the one from the magic circle and again you know usually when weaving in your ends from the beginning of a magic circle you have to be quite meticulous and do it you know at least three times or something just so to make sure that it doesn't uh, unravel but in this case we just do it once here and we know that nothing will get unraveled because we're stiffening it okay with that out of the way cut the two tails like so Whoop. And that is round one. And actually, I have a small uh, trick that I wanted to show you. I will, when I'm making this, because these are, you will see, it's quite addictive. I'm, like I said, I've made like 40 already before I even started filming because it's so much fun. So what I do, once I start, I know I will be making loads of these. So what I do is I make these little uh, star embryos. <laughs> so I will just make loads of these first round ones. And then I have them at hand and it's, you know, it's way quicker just to to um, to do your stars once you've done that. All the starts and we've woven in the ends there. OK, so I recommend this. Uh, lots of fun to be had for me here. OK, that was round one. OK, on to round two of the Big Star. Now I'm introducing my first teal here. I absolutely love teal. Teal and turquoise, those are my, my absolute favorites. Well, you know, and that and uh, hot pink, neon pink, which we do not have in Katona. If you're listening, Shepes, please do neon pink in Katona. <laughs> OK, so uh, on to round two of the Big Star. And you can just start with in any stitch you like. We have we should have 12 stitches here in our first round, and we're going to insert our hook into whichever into the back loop. We're going to be working this whole round into the back loop only, okay? So leave a bit of a tail and pull your yarn up, do one chain, and then one single crochet into the same stitch. Okay, so that's one single crochet we have there, and tuck at the tail so that it's nice and tight here the chain and then we're going to do two more single crochets just one into each of the next two stitches like so and now we're going to make a corner which is two chains okay so i'm going to do the repeat now you now do after the two chains then the repeat is one single crochet into the same stitch as the last single crochet and i'm working over my tail here as you can see obviously yeah Everything else will just be stupid. So one single crochet into the same stitch as the last single crochet. And then 
one into each of the next two stitches. So now we have three single crochet stitches and then we do two chains for the corner. And again, one single crochet into the same as the last stitch. And then two and three, always three single crochets on each side. And then we do two chains for the corner. And again, this is just too short of a round to be cutting. One single crochet into the same stitch as the last one. And then one into each of the next two stitches, like so. Chain two. And one into the same. Always working over the tail. And two and three. And the third one here in our second to last repeat should be here really into the second last stitch of the round. Because now we're going to do two chains. And then we do one single crochet into the last, into the same stitch as we did the last uh, single crochet. And then one single crochet here into the, what is really the last stitch of the round. And then we do the last single crochet into the same stitch as we joined it to in the beginning. That way we get two stitches there on the corner as well as for the other ones. Yeah. And then we just finish with two chains and cut the yarn. Okay, and now we take our next color and join with the upcoming color. I'm always leaving a bit of a tail here. We're going to work over with all our tails. And we join into the first single crochet of the round that we did here, you see. Not the chain that we did in the beginning, but into the back loop of the first single crochet here. And we do a slip stitch with a new color, like so. Okay, that was the join, so that was round two in the big star. On to round three. Oh, I love making tutorials for quick stuff like this. <laughs> but I always manage to kind of duck it up with making all these variations, but yeah. <laughs> On to round three of the big star. Now we've already joined with our new color, with the the, just with the slip stitch and now we're going to do one single no so, sorry one chain here and do take care to um, you know tuck nicely at that and now we're going to start with our double crochet so now we're going to yarn over and we're going to do go round uh, down one round not into this one here but all the way to the first one go there into the front loop here and yarn over and pull our yarn up of the loop that we're working into now we have three stitches uh, loops up on our hook and we're going to yarn over and go to two and yarn over and go through two okay and always take care to work over your tail because then we don't have to weave them in which is way better and now we're going to do two single crochets and the single crochets always go into the back loop of course one here and the second one lands on the first corner chain and we're going to work into the back loop of those as well okay second one here and then we're going to work the corner chain one and two corner chains. OK, and now to the repeat here for round three, one single crochet into the back loop of the second corner chain. And another single crochet here into the back loop of the first of the three single crochets. And then right smack in the middle of each side, we're going to do our double crochet down to the first round. Pull your yarn up of the loop that we're working into. These are normal DCs, you guys. <laughs> okay, and then we pull through two and two, like so. And now I'm just gonna drop my tail here. I've worked over it just a bit, but it's like I said before, we're gonna be using the stiffener, the fabric stiffener, so there's no use in, you know, being over zealous with the, with the working over the tails. They will not unravel, but obviously we have to hide them a bit. Uh, what was I doing? One single, no, one double crochet and then two single crochets. And the second one lands here into in the first corner chain. And then two chains. Okay, let's do it again. We have two single crochets. First one in the chain, like so. And then one double down. And two singles. And two chains. Okay, this is the repeat for round three. We're just placing one double crochet into each and every side of the star. It has six sides. 
and then doing two single crochets on each side of it. Do, 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 do. And always two chains for the corner, obviously. Okay, two more here. Again, this is just too short to be editing it. <laughs> editing it. Just you just crochet along with me. Two single crochets, one double in the middle, and two singles, and two chains. Again, two singles, one double. Whoop. There we go. One double here. Ah, I forgot to uh, work over my hand. Okay. Well, it's enough to do it just uh, for these few stitches here then. Well, yeah, let's unravel like a couple of stitches so that we're working a bit more over it. So at the end of the round, don't do like me. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> at the end of the round, we're going to take our... Our... Uh, uh, thread here, the tail from, from last round, and we're going to work over that one as well, so we don't have to weave in any ends. So just when you have like five to ten stitches left, and you put your tail over here, and you're going to work over it like so. Okay, one and two. And you just work over the, the tail when you're doing the single crochets, not the double one. Okay, and then that was the double one in the middle. And now take care to keep your tail here up on the hook. So we're working over it. One and two, and then the two chains. And now to finish the round, we're just going to do two single crochets here. One into this uh, chain here and one into the slip stitch from the join. Okay, so one here into the chain, always into the back loop. And then one here into the slip stitch. And I kind of like to go down here and go into, into the other one that is sort of behind it, the green one as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was the final single crochet. And now you want to tuck a bit at your yarn. Okay, and then we're going to join into the back loop of the first double crochet of the round. Cut your yarn because we're going to join with a new yarn, with a new color. The, my favorite gray here. So we always want those neutral colors as well. And we join into the back loop of the first double crochet of the round, the current round, and just slip stitch up like so. Okay, so this is round three, all done. Okay, on to round four. And we have our new color joint here with the slip stitch. And we're going to pick up our tail and work over it here. And so we start round four by making one chain here. And then we're going to do one double crochet just next to the double crochet, just after the double crochet from last round. Like so. And now we are going to be doing a bit of an increase. So we're going to tuck at it a bit this way, the other way if you're left-handed, and we're going to do three single crochets here now. So the first single crochet here really goes behind the double crochet, okay? So we're going to have to tuck it a bit here to the right and then work into the stitch that is behind the double crochet. So that's one and then two and three single crochets, the last of the three lands in the first corner chain. And then we do chain two, okay? And now I'm going to show you the repeat. And now we do three single crochets. The first one goes into the chain. I'm still working over my tail here. One and two and three. And the last of the three single crochet just lands here in, in the stitch right before the double crochet. And now we're going to do a yarn over and do one double crochet on this side of our DC from last round. And one double crochet on the other side of it. Like so. And then tuck at it a bit, like I said. And now I'm just going to drop my tail. We don't have to work more over it. Tuck at it a bit and get into this stitch. We're going to make three stitches, um, single crochet stitches here again. And so the first one lands here behind the DC. And the last one lands in the first corner chain and chain two. 
Okay, again, three single crochets. One DC on this side of our double crochet, one DC on that side. Okay, so we're doing double crochets on each side of the DC from round three. And then we tuck a bit and go here behind and do three single crochets up to the corner. So we're doing quite a lot of a increase here in this round. And then two chains for the corner. Okay, I'm just gonna continue. And work these. You can just crochet along with me. Three singles. I'm gonna do two doubles, one at each side of the DC from round three. Like so, and then three single crochets up to the corner and two chains for the corner. A couple of more repeats to go. Always the same. Easy peasy. Oh, I love making like small pieces like these. It's so satisfying. Quick makes, especially during summer. I want to have just these small projects on the go. Although I must say that the, the only bad thing about doing this as a small project is that I always want to carry like 100 colors with me. <laughs> uh, because I always want to make like, you know, a lot of, can't be making two uh, that are the same, but I, I will say that you don't really need to, I do make, I love making like a set of them in the same color. So I would, for example, I would use these uh, six colors that I have here now and make, you know, you can, you know, rearrange the colors and have fun with that. So yeah, you don't really need, maybe it's just me that always carry on, carry like 25 colors with me, but you only just need maybe five or six, and then you can play with the arrangement of them. Okay, this is the end of the last repeat here. One and two and three single crochets. The last one lands in the corner. And then we do our two chains. And now we're up to the end of the round here. And we're gonna do three single crochets. First one goes into the chain, two and three. The third one lands here just before our uh, double crochet here. And now we're gonna go and do one double crochet down. And I'm actually gonna show you, because this one here is not the same as the other joints because we didn't have a double crochet to hide it here in round two. So if you just look here and see, you, uh, you kind of have to, you could go into this one, but it's not as nice actually. So I try to go into this one here that is really sort of almost behind the DC here from, from round three. So it's a sort of like go deep go long moment. So yarn over, find this one here. It's a bit difficult to get into it sometimes, not now for me actually, and work your double crochet, the last double crochet of the round there. And now we're gonna cut the yarn and join with the next color, which is this lovely dark teal. Get a bit of depth in our star and we are going to skip the chain here in the beginning of the round and we're going to join into the back loop of the first double crochet of the current round. Mm -hmm. And just join with a slip stitch, whoop. Okay, and that's it. This was round four. All done. You see how we're getting this kaleidoscope, cal cal how do you say this, kaleidoscope uh, look in the start. Such fun. On to round five. And we already did the join. I'm gonna tuck a bit here at my end so it's a bit longer so it's easy to crochet over it. And we start, we already joined with the color that we'll be using in round five and we start by making one chain and tucking nicely at everything. Do, 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 do. And now I'm gonna work over the tail here as always at the beginning of the round. And now we're gonna start by doing one double crochet here down. And then we're going to work three single crochets up to the corner. And now, and do take care to work over your tail at the same time so you won't have to weave it in. Otherwise, if we're weaving in all the ends, then it's just no fun to use all these colors. But when you work over them, it's no problem. 
uh, concentrates in that one and two and three. Third one lands here in the first corner chain. And then we do the two chains for the corner. And now we get to the repeats of one side here for round five. And we're going to work three single crochets. First one lands in the second corner chain, two and three. And here we have now one stitch before the double crochet. And now we're going to do the double crochet from round four, that is. And now we're going to yarn over and go down and do one double crochet here on the, on the right side of the double crochet here from last round. And now we're going to do one front post down around the, the single double crochet here in the middle from round one, three. Okay, so yarn over and front post just means that we're going to be working around this one. So you put your, your hook completely behind this double crochet here and pull your yarn up and you want to give it a bit of a tuck like this so that it won't sort of cripple, not cripple, crumple. Hmm. Okay, yarn over, pull through two and yarn over, pull through two. And then we're going to do, and we're, we're skipping the both the stitches here that are from the uh, double crochets from last round. And now we're going to do the last of the three here, double crochets. Opa. At the left side, just after the double crochet from last round. Okay. Yeah, it didn't split. Like so. So we've done here three double crochets in a row and the, the middle one is a front post around the double crochet here from round three. Okay, and then we're going to do three single crochets and now we don't have to go behind or anything. It just l lines up perfectly. Next single, next stitch here, one and two and the third one lands on the corner and then two chains for the corner. Okay, we're going to do this repeat again together, step by step. So easy when you can watch it, right? Uh, okay, we start with three single crochets, one and two and three. And so we're going to be skipping all these here, four stitches really. We're going to work three double crochets and we're going to skip four stitches. The last here single crochet before the double crochet, the two double crochets and the one after it as well. Okay, so now we do our three double crochets here in the middle of the of the this side and we yarn over and we go down here just before the double crochet and then we're going to do our front post all the way down here going behind the double crochet there you want to tuck it a bit up here like so one and two that's the second double crochet and the third one goes here after the second double crochet from last round and there you go now you have all three double crochets done and now we do three single crochets again so really this round the repeat is three singles three doubles three singles and then two, chain two for the corner let's just do it all over again not like i have anything better to do <laughs> maybe you do but then you can just fast forward it's no problem i won't be upset <laughs> You know, I'm watching you. I'm seeing everybody who's fast forwarding and, you know. <laughs> uh, that was the three single crochets. Now we do the three doubles. First one here. Second is the front post. Give it a bit of a tuck before going through the first two. And then the third one here after on the other side of our DCs from last round. There you go. All three done. And then three single crochets. Third one landing here in the corner chain, first corner chain, and then chain two. Okay. I'm deeming this too short to, to cut. That noise is just my washing machine apparently going crazy in the kitchen. Don't you love how, I mean, do you know, do you not get what I was saying with having one sort of darker color and then one neutral one? They really do pop the other ones up and, you know, all of them have their purpose, really. Because the thing is, if you want to make bright things, and I do love bright colors and bright things, just bought these like hot pink shoes I'm going to show you in the video later. 
<laughs> or just, you know, take notice. I think it's going to be in the intro. Uh, I'm sure you will all notice my hot pink shoes. Um, but the, yeah, the thing is that you really need those. Uh, and I call these, I don't know how to say this in English, accentu accentuation colors. So you have the accent colors. Those are the bright ones and the fun ones. And then you have the other ones that are sort of the helping colors. And those help elevate the bright ones and really make them pop. So they are not any less important, actually. Not as fun. I'll give you that, although I don't want to be, like, discriminating any colors. But but um, you do need them alongside with the bright, fun ones to really give it both depth and more of a pop, in my opinion. Okay, I have rambled on almost to the end of the round now. <laughs> okay, that was the last repeat. And I'm going to show you how to finish the the round here with the with this bit here of the first side that we started in the middle obviously always so now we do three single crochets first one lands in the corner chain as always one and two and three and we already did one of the dcs here in the beginning of the round so now we're going to do one here and the double crochet and uh, the front post here to finish so we do one double crochet here and then one front post dc here and pull that a bit before going through two and two and we are almost done with round five cut the yarn and now we're going to join with the the final color which is this bright and lovely turquoise which is going to bring it home <laughs> with the last round the last round color just kind of needs to be something bright and fun but you know again matter of opinion uh, so to finish the round we're going to join into the as always back loop of the first dc of the round and leave a bit of a tail and join with your next color just using a slip stitch foot foot there you go that was round five okay on to round six final round of our big mosaic start which isn't very big it's like and finished and stiffened I think it's like eight or nine centimeters okay so we did the the slip stitch join sorry I already went ahead there and we we joined with the slip stitch at the end of round five and then we're going to do one chain here at the beginning of round and tuck it nice and tight and get our tail here to work over and now we start this round six with doing four single crochets just one into each and every stitch here and work over our tail one and two and three and four. The fourth one lands here in the in the the corner chain. And now we're gonna do the tip of the star, and then we do three chains, and then we join with a slip stitch into the first chain of the three, like so. Whoop and whoop. There we go. And we get this little Mm, tickety tack thing okay and now to the repeat for round six we're going to do four single crochets the first one lands here in the corner chain one and two and three and four and now we can just drop our tail and now we're going to do uh two front post double crochets worked together and we're going to do them around these two uh, double crochets here from last uh, from um, round four you see these one these two here that's why i like to have them in a bit of a similar color so that they kind of merge okay so so yarn overs <laughs> okay we're going to skip all these three stitches here that we have here and we're just going to do two front post double crochets here around these two and we're going to work them together okay so yarn over go under your first dc here from round four pull your yarn up what is this pull your yarn up a bit so it doesn't crumple get your yarn and go through one and leave it like this and we're going to do the second one and work the two together okay now you yarn over go under the second one like so pull your yarn up give it a bit of a slack and yarn through and two and then we yarn through and do through all three loops here together and close up these two double crochet front posts together like so 
Okay, and now we're not going to work into the double crochet here from last round. We're just going to start right here and do four single crochets here up until we get to the corner. And the last one lands here in the first corner chain. And then we do our little, what do you call this? You call this like peacock or something in English. We do three chains and then join into the first of the three with a slip stitch. You can just also just do three chains, actually. I just like this, it's just to get an extra unfair on the star point, point, pointy things. Yes, I will continue crocheting and try and do my best to just talk less. <laughs> okay, again, let's show you the repeat. Four single crochets. First one in the corner chain. And the fourth lands here in the last single crochet from last round. We're not going to work into the double crochets from last round. And now we're going to do the two front post DCs here work together around these two uh, double crochets from round four. Yarn over, go under the first one, pull your yarn up, give it a bit of a slack and go through two. Again, yarn over, go over the set under the second one, pull your yarn up, give it a bit of a slack, go through two. And then we are here, and then we're going to yarn over and go through all three loops. Voila! And now again, we do four single crochets until we've gotten up to the corner here. The last one lands in the corner chain, and then we do our peacock thing. The three chains, and then join them into a little circle like this with a slip stitch. Okay, so that's all there is, really. Four single crochets. Two front post DCs work together. One and two. And close them up together like this. And then four single crochets. And then do our little knob. <laughs> So we're up to stiffy, wood glue, and knob. <laughs> Don't report me to YouTube. <laughs> Again, four singles. The two front post DCs work together. One and two. Close them up, boopa and then four singles. <laughs> and then three chains and st uh, st stick your hook into the third chain from the hook and join and do the slip stitch. Foot, foot. Okay, this is the last repeat we're getting to here. The fifth repeat. Four singles. The two double together. Front post. Get those smooth lines. Front post is so much fun, isn't it? And take them together like so. And then the four single crochets to get up to the point pointy bits of the star, and then we do the knob. <laughs> I know this is called something, like, it's called tacky in Icelandic, I know what it's called in Icelandic. Uh, okay, that's all our five repeats, and now we're going to finish this, uh, the round here, and we're going to do, ah, I'm going to work over my tail. Oh my god, I've been forgetting to work over my tail at the end of the round. Please don't tell anybody. <laughs> Okay, when you have a few stitches left of the round, then you can take the color from last round and work over that tail as well. Let's imagine I've been doing that for the whole thing. Uh, and we do four single crochets, working over our tail, always at the end of the round, as, as well as at the, at the beginning. Okay, one, two, three, four. And now we're going to just finish the round doing our two double front post double crochets together here. What about I? Oh, one and two. Always 
giving a bit of a slack and close them together. And there we go. And cut the yarn, pull it right up. And that's all six rounds for you. Okay, and so now we're gonna take our, our darning needle and I should, in theory, just have to weave in this one ant here at the end, but I think I have been forgetting to work over my ants at some point, so we'll, well, we'll see soon enough. But when we now do, we join uh, with the invisible join stitch, invisible join. So do take care when you're joining now. This is the chain at the beginning. We're not going to work into that one. This one here is the first uh single crochet of the round. We're not going to work into that one because the the, the uh, invisible joint will be uh, like that stitch. So we go into the one and do the first second single crochet of this current round under both loops like so. Pull your yarn through and pull it a bit together like this. And then we insert our needle again back into the back loop of the last stitch that we did here, which was the, the two double crochets together. And I actually like to if you see here on the back, I will grab the, the chain stitch here as well, just to kind of give it a better hooking. Okay, and as you can see, now I pull here and this just looks like a normal stitch. Oh, packable finishing, packable, lovely, lovely. <laughs> if I'm not happy with it, who's going to be? And then we just weave in our end here. And again, we don't have to do very much weaving. Just one, just a few stitches here ahead and then cut our yarn. And now is the moment of truth. Yes, I forgot here two, two ends at the, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was, what, do you think it's possible that I was talking too much? Is that a... <laughs> okay, let's imagine those aren't here. So what you should do now, if you always weave in your, your ends, I mean, I did this obviously again on purpose. I always do mistakes on purpose just to show you. And so that you remember <laughs> to do as I say, not as I do, no? So here I worked over all my ends, you see. And now before cutting them, I'm just going to tuck at them nicely. And then I'm going to trim them off. I always sort of feel like a hairdresser when I do this because I'm, 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 I'm catching them like a, like a hairdresser cuts, cuts the hair, right? And just cut. Whoop at that. And this one was worked over. And this one here as well. Just always tuck at them before cutting. And again, nothing will unravel here. I mean, we have to work them a bit under because otherwise it will just not be proper, proper work ethic, would it be? <laughs> uh, but, you know, you don't have to do too much because we will be stiffening it all and it won't unravel. But yes, we do need to at least weave them under a couple of stitches. So here are the ones that I left to remind you not to do, not to forget. Uh, about this, about weaving in your ends at the end of round as well. And I'll just work these in here, just a couple of stitches ahead. So always, I'm always reminded of my, my grannies, especially my great grandmother who taught me how to crochet when I'm doing the finishing touches because she was always like, Tina, this is, this is, this is the make or break, mo mo you know, moment. You cannot be doing all this work and, and, and doing a beautiful piece and then be skimming out on the finishing touches. And so always actually, I think that she's, well, I do think she's watching over me, but especially when, I, when I'm crocheting and especially when I'm doing the finishing. <laughs> so I will never, like even, even when you know, I know nobody will ever see the ends and it's just going like even up on a wooden plate for a, for a what you call it, like a, wall art or something I was just like I can't I just I can't leave the ends I always weave them in uh you know you have to do as your granny says and voila you see all done and I'm actually just going to show you I made one before where did I put that I'll show you all this uh a bit further on in the video how to pin them up and uh, do the stiffening but I just want to show you that well at this stage it kind of looks more like a flower doesn't it and you could sort of maybe I don't know stiffen them like this this and just have them be like a natural flower or something but to get the proper star um form then you really do need to pin them out and 
and then stiffen them. You see the difference here. And they're so pretty when you, when you, you know, pin them all out like a star. So that's up later on in the tutorial. We'll do every step of it, the stiffening and everything, obviously. But this was round by round, the big star. Boop, 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 uh, and now I'm going to show you how to make the other variations. The small one, the tiny one here. Don't I have any tiny ones? This was with the four rounds. And then there's the one with five rounds. So we'll just go down basically. This was the six rounds. And then there's the, fi the five rounds and four rounds. And then there's the tiny, tiny little one with just three rounds. Okay, so I'm going to show you these. Uh, the other ones are exactly the same up till the to the last round. Then you just do a bit of a tweak to get it nicely. Okay, so this was the big star. This one here. Ah, all done. And now you'll just make, you know, you have to make at least 50. <laughs> okay, big star, all done. On to the next one then, yeah? Okay, so next up is the five round star. And I'm just going to show you the last round because the uh, the first four are just the same as in the big one that I showed you. Here are a couple of five round stars. And I actually really like this one when you just do it in two colors. So if you just start with A and then do B, A, B, always, then it really, it looks so cute. It's like a pinwheel, isn't it? <laughs> but it's fun to play with in all kinds of colors as well. And I'm going to do that here now. And so, like I said, this is round five and the five round star. And e the first four are just exactly the same as in the big one. And I've done those already. So here we're at the end of round four. And then we are going to join the same way as we did before into the first double crochet of the round into the back loop with a new color. And just swish, swish with slip stitch like so. And do one chain and fasten it all nicely and tuck at it so that, and take your tail here so we're gonna work over it. Um, this is actually quite similar, but still there's just a little trick to get a neater when you're only doing five rounds. Okay, so now we start, instead of doing the double crochet here, we're gonna start and do four single crochets. And we wanna do four here instead of three as before because we want the pointy bits of the stars to be a bit bigger and I'm working over my tail here as well. The fourth one lands in the first corner chain like so. And then we do the little knob, <laughs> three chains and then slip stitch into the third chain from the hook. And now we get to the repeat for round, for the last round in the five round star. I'm just gonna let my tail go down here. We don't really need it anymore. And now we're gonna do four single crochets. Oops. Keep that in the frame there. One, two, three, and four. The last one is into the last single crochet here. I'm just up to the two double crochets here. And now we're going to do uh, two double crochets together. No, sorry, the three double crochets, and we're going to work them all together. They're not going to be, uh, because in the other version, then we did just one here and one front post here and one here, but we're going to work these all three together just to take it a bit together here. So we start by going back here, working our, whoops, first double crochet here. Oh my God. Just before the, the, there we go. The first double crochet from last round. Okay, go through two and keep it here without closing because we can work all three together. Yarn over and do the front post down here. And pull your yarn a bit up there and go through two and keep it. And then we do the third one. Pull your yarn up and go through two. And then we have all three double crochets up on our hook and we're gonna close them all together like so. And then we're going to do four single crochets. And the first one is here sort of behind the last double crochet there. One and two and three and four. And then we do the knob. Whoops. 
three chains and slip stitch into the first one like so okay so as you can see it's quite similar to round five in the big star but the difference is the difference is that obviously we have to work our star points differently these ones here and because it's the final round and we do the four chain, four single crochets instead of the three, and then we're going to work all the three double crochets together, closing it up nice and smooth, bringing it home. Okay, this is my new favorite saying, bringing it home. <laughs> okay, all three here up on the hook, and then I'm going to close them all together. Whoopa! And then four single crochets <laughs> okay i'm gonna laugh every time i do the knob now <laughs> okay i can show you one more time maybe four singles Sorry about that. And then all the three double crochet stitches worked together. Front post here, always giving that one a bit more of a slack. Like so, and pull them all together. And then another three here. No, four, sorry. Four single crochets, the three double crochets together, another four. Okay, sorry about that. And then the knob. Okay. And I just wanted to say that um, while I continue here and finish the round, is that this green that I'm using here is especially for my friend Sui. I hope you appreciate the effort. <laughs> I don't tend to use green very much, but it is nice and fun and vibrant to get some extra, extra fun colors in there. <laughs> A tribute to Sui. <laughs> It's very professional of me to not put my phone on silent while I'm filming, isn't it? I mean, professional is just like my middle name. I'm very, you know, organized and strict and that's, that's uh, <laughs> the name of the game. Okay, now we're on our last repeat, doing our three double crochets here together. And then four singles. Knob time. And then to finish the round, because remember we, we didn't start with one DC here, we have to do all our three here at the end of the round. So we do the four singles. And then we finish the round with the three double crochets together. One, the front post, two and three. Oopa, there we go. And then we join them all together like so. Yay. Okay, so that was the last round in the five round star and then we just pull our yarn all the way up like so oh my god um 
ant weave in the ant and I think I think I remember to work over all my tails. No, I forgot again. Oh dear lord. <laughs> okay, so when you when you do the the invisible join here at the end of to finish off round five on the five round star, then again don't go into the chain, not into the first single crochet, but into the the second here. Tuck at it a bit, then back again here. And I always grab the chain here as well. Like so. Um, weave it in just a bit. I only forgot one tail here. Okay, I'm just gonna weave that in quickly. Always tuck at it before weaving in or before cutting, always tuck at it because it's nicer. Just want the join to be very neat. So now I can cut these. And tuck at everything. Imagine you're a hairdresser. <laughs> and cut. these as well like so and it doesn't matter if you even tuck a bit too much because then when you pin it out it will automatically be fine there you go so this is then the five round star all done and remember that this one is one of my favorite to do in just two colors actually on to next up is the four round star yay Okay, next up are the four round stars. And these are actually quite cute as well when you do them just in two colors, like this, where you can use more colors. So I'm gonna use four colors in mine. I already did the first three rounds because they are exactly the same as in the big star. And then I'm gonna finish it up with some lovely turquoise. And all the same here in the first three rounds. And we're going to join the same as well into the back loop of the first double crochet of the round. And one chain. And now we are going to do three single crochets. Two and three. Whoop. I'm just going to put this here so you can see it. And then we're going to do the, the knob, three, three chains, and then one slip stitch into the first one, like so. And here is the repeat. We're going to do three single crochets. First one goes into the chain, obviously. like so and now we're going to do two DCs together on each side here of the DC from last round so we do one here and keep it like so and then we do the second and then we take them both together like this and then we do three single crochets And then chain three and slip stitch into the first one to get that extra oomph in our star point. And this is just the same the whole way around. Obviously, as always, three singles and then work two double crochets together, placing them here on each side of the double crochet from round three. Splitting here, there we go. And then three single crochets. And the knob. So basically it's uh, 
obviously very similar to the normal round four in our big star. But the difference is that we do this little peacock here at the top of the star. And instead of just working these two as normal whole DCs on each side here, we do them two together. So we close them up together just to get that extra sort of um, decrease here in the, in the middle of the star here on each side. Easy peasy, but it really is quite fun to be able to do these different sizes because, like I said, they look so good together and it's fun to make a set of them in two or threes or four and, uh, you know, have them go from small to bigger. I'm going to show you how I'm going to put mine up later. <laughs> Such fun. Okay, the two DCs together here. Absolutely love the color combo that I'm doing here now. This sort of brown goes so well with the teal. No green here, so we... <laughs> okay. Just like my yarn is a bit tangled here. There we go. Okay, last repeat. Oh, and I'm going to remember to work over my tail here. Just popping it there up so that we don't have to weave it in later. Two DCs together like so. Oops, I forgot one there. You have to remember that the first one here is a bit kind of behind the DCs, the second DC. Two and three. Knob. And now we finish the round doing three single crochets and the two DCs together. So one and two and three and then the two DCs together here sort of over the join and remember here in the first round you kind of have to go behind the DC from round three to get the placement right for the first DC here like so two together cut the yarn pull it straight up and finish with the invisible join. As always, just going into the second single crochet here at the beginning of the round. This is the chain, the first and the second, like so. And back into the last one here and grab that chain with you, like so. Do, do, do. I keep forgetting. I swear that when I'm, <laughs> it's like it, I get distracted when I'm working with the camera. But when I do this normally just for fun, I always work over the tails. But then also I will, you know, back it up even to work over the tails. But once I started fil filming, I, I prefer not to back it up because then I have to start again, don't I? But I always remember to work over my tails. <laughs> Now I just seem to never remember God. <laughs> okay, tuck at at all of them like so, and trim. Mm, like this, cutting the ends. Nothing like good scissors. Et voila! That's the four round star for you. And it will get really, it will get better shape once we pin it all down. Nice! On to the three round star. And that one actually is 
just almost completely like the first three rounds. The only difference is that you make the little knob instead of doing just chain two on each corner, you do the chain three and slip stitch in the first one. Yeah, so I'm just going to show you how you finish. I did just exactly the same except for here with the chains as round three. And again, we finish with the invisible join. And with this invisible join here, we're not going to join into the the um, double crochet, but into the first single crochet here so that the join goes over the double crochet. Like so, grab the chain and tuck it up. That was a bit too quick. And just weave your end in quickly. Like so, tuck at the ends and cut. Do, 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 do. And as you can see here, I did mine in three colors, like I did this one here. And it's fun in two colors as well, like this, or even two colors like this. I think it's quite cute. So you can go, well, you might, I mean, you could, you know, also just do it in one color, I suppose. But um, that's the tiny three round start for you. Next up is the bangle one. Okay, next up for really, I think this is the most fun part. I love making these, uh, the stars and, and, and putting them on, up on a hoop like this or a bangle. So these are, like I said, these are just, uh, I go thrifting for these. It's just normal bracelets, uh, bangles. You can have them in all kinds of types and colors and it's so much fun to, to play with that. Uh, they do usually come in these sizes here, which is like seven centimeters. Occasionally I will f find a smaller one like this one. And I love, like I, it's fun to play with that, that one is smaller or whatever, if you're gonna make three sets of threes. But uh, so for using Katona and my gauge, uh, then it fits for me to do a star with uh, four rounds when I'm putting them, mounting them up on a hoop. Like this one here, for example, was smaller. So I was using uh, quite a lot finer yarn to get it to fit here, actually. So, but this is really something that you'll have to play along, play, 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 play a bit around with because it depends on the yarn that you use and your gauge. But you want basically the rule of thumb is that you want it to be quite uh, like tightly strung up onto the hoop before you um, stiffen it, stiff, uh, do the, apply the fabric stiffener. Okay, so I have one here that is actually just a tad smaller than these ones, but I mean, it'll do. Um, and what you do is that you just work round up to round three normally, like I've done here. And before I put them up on the hoop, actually, then I like to uh, cut my ends because I don't like have, having the ends when I'm working this. I'm just going to trim the ends here now, the ones that I've already worked over. Okay. Some more green here for Tui. <laughs> uh, and then we start the round just normally. And we're going to use obviously the same method here as we used for the four round star here, which is to do these double crochets here, uh, two together, just closing them up together instead of making them separately like in the big one, yeah? So it's like any any um, size that you choose, do work it like I showed you the last round for for the three round one or the four round one or the five round one. Uh, do the, the last round, you know, according to that. And then the trick is just on the on the pointy bits here, actually. Uh, OK, let's just get into that. So we're going to join, as always, here round four. At the end of round three, we're going to join with our new color with a slip stitch into the back loop of the first DC here of the round. I'm going to work over this tail as well. So now we start by doing three single crochets. Working over our tail preferably. 
this is not showing properly. Let's have it here. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba. Okay, three single crochets. And then when we get to the, the top here, I'm just going to cut this right away here. We don't need to. I don't like having these ends when I'm working on the hoops. Okay, we did three single crochets. And then we're going to do one chain. Okay, this will not do. I want this. Yep. Uh, one chain, and then we start working it onto the hoop. Okay, so you just take the hoop like so and hold it here next to where you're working. And you do one chain, and then you do one single crochet around the hoop. So the yarn goes over the hoop, the, the hook goes into it, and then you pull the yarn up like so. And it's just like a normal single crochet, but you do want to take care to do it really tightly, like really tight tension. And then just get your yarn and go through like so. Okay, and just fasten it really nicely. And then you do one single crochet. So instead of doing, no, sorry, the, um, chain. So instead of doing three chains here, we do one chain, one single crochet around the hoop, and then one chain. Okay, and then we just uh, sort of um, let loose the, or like let go of the hoop. And we continue and work here normally. Uh, one, two, and three single crochets. And the two double crochets together. Exactly like we did in the other four round version. And then three singles. And we're working our way up to the corner here again. The last one lands in the first corner chain and then we do one chain and we're going to fasten on all the corners we're going to fasten onto the hoop so we do one chain one single crochet here around the hoop and again really take care to have that nice and tight and fasten it and then one chain it's difficult to get through even but it's better to have these tight here and then we just let go of the hoop again and do our sides and it's again three single crochets. Two double together. And three singles. And then we're again up to a corner or to a pointy bit and we do one chain. One single crochet around the hoop. Bam really trying to do it as tightly as I can. Okay, one single crochet here and tighten it a lot as much as you can before you do the second chain. And then just get go of the hoop and continue. One, two, and three. Two double together. One, two, and three. And then we do one chain. And now it's getting a bit more complicated to put it on the hoop. So just take them all together like so, all the pointy bits, and just hold them all, uh, pull them all together like this, and then it's easier. So one chain, one single crochet around the hoop, like so, tighten it nicely and do one chain. Let go of the hoop and we go again. Three singles. Two double together. Three singles. The last one lands here in the first corner chain. And now we just have two pointy bits to go. And again, we do one chain. Keep these all here sort of mashed up together, like so. And do the chain and the single crochet around the hoop. Tighten and one chain. And now it's getting, yeah, it's getting a bit like <laughs> uncomfortable. Just power through. We go again. 
but do take care like now you want like this chain here this stitch here wants to kind of get big and we don't want that so always like do take care to have a good tension after both when you do the the single crochet here and just after when you continue after joining the pointy bit okay one and two and three and two double crochets together Okay, and again three, one, two, and three, and chain one. And now we're at the set last corner that we're joining, and then we have to stretch out our star. So when I'm doing all of these, I just keep them all like like smashed together like this, so it's easier to work. But now we're gonna have to, and this is actually quite a fun part. Uh, now we have to spread her wings, and we just go like this, and pull it out like so <laughs> and basically at this point you'll see if it's fitting well because you want it to be quite like stretch like it's you know uh, if it's too big then it won't because the the um, sort of like the part where we're pinning it down we will pin it down and st and you and apply the fabric stiffener later but you also want it to be very firmly inside here tucking because if not it's just not it's just not fun you have to it has to be um, you know, nice and tight that it's fitting the circle and it's not, you know, if it's too big, then it's just not fun, really. Okay, so then there's the last bit, which is just a tad tricky, not difficult per se, but you know. So now that we've uh, spread our star out like this, isn't it cute? Then I did the one uh, chain and then we do the one single crochet around the hoop like so. And again, always nice and tight chain one and now this we have to go and crochet down here again to finish the round and this is a bit just a tad tricky not horribly but you know i like to actually change my grip for this and take it like a, and use it like um do the uh, knife grip here so just go here into the next stitch and we're going to do three single crochets and the two double crochets together and so really take care to be, you see how I'm putting my, my finger up here to, to have it really nice and tight. Get the yarn and just do the single crochets, but really do take good care with your tension here. We really want it to be nice and tight at this point. Okay. I don't know, it's better with the knife grip than these last stitches, I feel. Okay, that's three single crochets. And then we're gonna do the two together and again this one here remember is a bit tricky when you have to go down to behind there we go behind the dc here Opa. okay no Ugh. dark me <laughs> okay there we go oh, I grabbed a bit of the teal there okay and like now it had gotten loose here, always tighten everything before continuing, okay? So that's up there and through two. That's the first double crochet. And then the second one goes here. And as you can see, this is a bit fiddly. Not impossible, not so difficult, but fiddly. Okay, get the yarn and through two. And always just, again, I know I've said like 10 times, but really do keep, Good care to keep your tension here really nice and tight. And that's it. Now finished the round. Finish the two here DCs together. Just pull it straight up. And then we weave in these couple of ends because it's quite impossible to weave in, to work over that tail at the end there. Well, it's not impossible, but it's uncomfortable. So I just leave that one. So now we do as before. We find the third, the Here's the first single crochet and the second single crochet. And we go under like this. And then back into it here. Just exactly the same way as we did with the other ones with the normal four round star. Et voila, you see, it's nice. Okay, weave in our end of it here. <laughs> these these are quite tight actually. The stitches is difficult even to weave in the end. So I was taking such good care to make it properly. Weave in this one. And always tuck at it before. There we 
There we go. And cut the ends. Et voila! <laughs> Isn't it cute? <laughs> and then it will get better form because we're going to pin it down to get the nice star form. Now it's a bit round here, but it's lovely still, isn't it? I really, really like these. And actually for Christmas ornaments, these are perfect, you guys. I mean, they're just really proper. And then you put the little uh, gold, uh, uh, you know, the tail in it to hang it up. And they're just really, really pre uh, pretty and, and proper Christmas ornaments. Yeah, but they're really good. I like them as well for wall hangings and stuff. And it just, it just makes everything so cute, doesn't it? <laughs> so that was a star in a hoop. Next up is the pinning and blocking. Yay! Whoopa! Okay, next up is pinning our stars down to give them the correct form. Because as you can see here, like it, more, it looks more like maybe a flower than actually a star. So to get the, the nice form on these, we want to pin them down before stiffening them. Um, again, you will need the the big paintbrush, a little bowl, some pins, preferably with a with this. Uh, should we say a knob <laughs> at the end, and uh, some fabric stiffener. I use Stiffy from Mod Podge, but you can also just uh, use uh, this uh, this glue, white glue that you will then uh, dilute a bit with water. But I do really like these here. Okay, so let's get to it. Ah, yeah, and obviously you'll need a blocking board. And I've covered mine with um, baking paper because it just leaves some residue of the glue and I don't want to duck up my um, my blocking mats because I use them for, for other things, obviously. Okay, so now let's get to it. I actually need to give this a little twist here. Okay, so I just um, twisted this around. So I want the little um, bowl. And so you want to always um, shake this before because it separates. And I just usually put quite a lot because you do use quite a lot of it. And here's my brush. Oh my God, we're gonna do pinning, not stiffening right now, okay. <laughs> Well done, Tina. Uh, it's good to have the glue ready. <laughs> so here are our little stars that we made. The five round one. No, the six round, the big one, the five rounds, four, both in a hoop and knot, and then the small one, the three round ones. Okay, so what you do when you pin them down is actually just to start on opposite sides here, just to pick two uh, knobs and uh, and pin one down in the middle of the three um, chain stitches here. And then you find the same spot on the opposite side here and really pull at it quite a lot, like so. So it's really stretched like this. And then you take the other pointy bits and you do the same and just pull them straight out like this. And on the opposite direction, like so. And it's okay, we will then, you know, do this with all six points. And then we kind of look at it and see if it's looking good enough. Okay, so this is pretty much okay. What you want to do is to have these two here in the same line. So maybe this one has to go a bit more up and always uh, uh, stretches as much as you can. And this one also has to go a bit more up and stretch. And you want these to be the a straight line. So you always want to have a straight line between these two here. And you want to have straight line between these here as well. You see? And then really where the magic happens is when we take this bit here. And this is very important. Sumamente importante. So then to get, because now still it's a bit like bland here, but to get it to be, you know, completely star-like like this, then we want to take these bits here and push them a bit towards the center. And that way we get these sharp corners that really make it pop and make it look like a proper star. So 
just in the middle here, obviously, always where, where we were doing our, our fancy bits there. And um, so we do, oh, this one is crooked. So we do, at this point, it's quite important to, you know, take your time with this, be a bit meticulous. You can do, you can get these like printouts uh, to put underneath and, you know, to have it like a correctly, you know, form, you know, they have like lines and stuff and motifs for this, but I will just do this by eye. But you do want to keep it, get it pretty neat. I will show you why, because for example, I did this one star here before, like because they will get quite hard after the, after stiffening. And you know, if you don't do it properly, they can, they can turn out a bit wonky. Like this one, for example, I did before, and it's a bit wonky. It's just be like this, and this one is kind of like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's fine, but uh, do take care to to uh, to really take your time with the pinning bit, and uh, it will pay off. Okay, and then we just do the same to all of them, and it's always the same thing, just to do it these straight lines. Taking this part one here, okay. Like so okay. So now, for example, this one has to go a bit up, and this one has to go a bit down. So you just start by doing it all sort of as you see it and then you can take your time to see if it's all fine and I mean these don't have to be perfect it's not you want them to be that the people can see that they are handmade and such but it is nice to get a nice form and it really does make all the difference to get them really neat at this point oh, isn't this satisfying to see how it's like taking form <laughs> I love putting these in here that are like making them all you see these look quite nice and when you do the ones with the hoops then uh, the hoop has done some of the work for us actually so I just pin them down here at two points up and down like so and you want to be like taking care of that you have this line here So everything is straight. Maybe this one should come a bit up here, like so. So again, straight lines here, straight lines here, straight lines here, and then in between all. Yeah. And then it's we do the middle bit to get those nice corners. Mm -mm -mm. It would be nice to hear in comments actually if you've been doing any any uh, crochet like stiffening pieces like these. I've been making these for Christmas for years and years. Dack it's now it must be. I usually make one new type of ornament each year and give it to everybody. Ah! Oh! And I mean I like it here like this is a bit like whoop but I mean I think that's a bit of like you could, if you wanted to be completely perfect, you could take it out here and pin it a bit like this as well. But I do like it to have a bit of a natural swing to it as well and then we have the little one here and that one is just the same always stretch a lot in the beginning And it's really like it's spreading its wings and it becomes so nice. Okay, let's see how it looks. This one has to go a bit up, out and up. Oop, oop. 
Sorry. Straight line. Okay, and this one is a bit crooked here. It has to be more to the left and to the right. Like so. And then we now do the middle bits. And this one really is, for this one, the middle bit is the most important, I think, because it's so tiny. It's And I want to actually at the join here. I want to maybe tuck a bit at this one here. And pull it back like so. And always take care that the sole DC there is in the right spot. Like so. After you've applied the fabric stiffener, it will actually, you can change them later on if you, uh, you can wash them out, you can rinse it out, but it's way better to just do it properly from the get-go, like so, and then you don't have to do that. Okay, the last one in. This is actually perfect uh, Christmas activity. I feel like this little like fiddly bits, some nice Christmas music. And perhaps an eggnog. Or we 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 drink here. Uh, it's called Gluck. you can use more pins if you want and sort of you know pull out pull it out a bit here or something but I kind of like it when it has like a natural swing to it so but you can see there's a lot of difference between after pinning them down from what they the the form that they used to have okay so that was the pinning down next up is the stiffening yay okay it's the last step, really, which is to apply the fabric stiffener. And you really just want to sort of go to town with this. <laughs> I've never had the problem of applying too much, really. So what you do is just really dab it quite a lot. And take care that it's completely soaked, because then we only have to do this once. I mean, you don't want to have puddles of it, but uh, I mean, the the yarn kind of soaks it in as well. So you can really apply it quite generously. I think it's safe to say. So I will start with all the middle bits. Getting all that done. And then it's important to, well, obviously we have to do 
this here and then it's important to get those sides really completely covered. Now we don't want much excess here on the on the which is not on the stars themselves but it's no problem it's just like uh, sometimes you will have to get like a bit of glue around them and you just pick it up it's no problem so this is not a very precise work but just mainly do take care to apply it quite generously and to do really well here all around the sides of it and even a bit under like so just so you get all the bits and especially the pointy bits nice and stiff Okay, one done. And I'm just going to continue and apply the fabric stiffener to all of my stars that I just made with you guys. Oh my God, I can't wait to see your stars. I do hope you'll... I mean, it's perfect for Christmas, obviously. That goes without saying. But I think they will look lovely as sort of fun, decorative splashes of colour in your garden as well, or at the patio, or in the window, or on your balcony. Such fun. Do check out the Facebook group, please, because, or, you know, or on Instagram, if you tag me there on Instagram, then I can see your pics, because it's the one thing I don't like about YouTube, isn't it, that I can't see your makes, you have to show me on other platforms. Hint to YouTube to, so that one could be, if if we could only upload pics and comments, God, that would be just marvelous, wouldn't it? Okay, this one all done as well. And then I'll show you the one with the loop, the hoop as well. Just move this a bit like so. So with the hoop, it's just the same, obviously. Just um Try not to uh, apply too much of the glue on the hoop itself because it will get like um, matte, like it will take away its shine. Ah yeah, and one more thing, do prepare it also that sometimes the fabric stiffener will change a bit the colour of your yarn. Sometimes it will go a bit darker after drying. So, I mean, it's see-through and all, but... Um, it will go maybe sometimes a bit darker and do apply to the little bit to our single crochet here around the hoop as well like so just so that it's so that it's all nice and, and firm and always here under There we go. And you just continue going like this. The same way. And then what I will do is I pop it on my radiator. But if not, then it dries faster. But if not, then it will just dry in, in a few hours. Maybe if you put it overnight, it should dry. Okay. Uh, I'm going to show you some of the dry ones, how you take them off. Okay, so obviously it would be more fancy if I would say like, eh, voila, and now they're dry and show you the same ones. <laughs> but I am impatient <laughs> and my camera is almost out of battery. So I'll just show you these here that I made last night. And so once they're dry, you just take out your pins, obviously. Sometimes you have to wiggle them a bit. That's why I prefer using the ones with the plastic bubble at the end. But these will do fine as well. And then they will kind of stick to your surface. So that's why I put the baking paper. But just pop them up like so. <gasps> it's so nice. And it's quite, you can see, it's quite hard. And then on the back side, you see there's a bit of, you can pick this out if you have a bit of, of um, 
the fabric stiffener here, but I think it's it's quite all right like this. Oh yeah, and the backside is striped, I hadn't told you that. So these are so nice and they're really proper. And let to show you one of these as well. I don't have a loop, hoop. Hula, 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 hula. Any sweets there? <laughs> okay. Oh, I love this bit. Mm, it's like popping homemade candy out of warm. Yep. Yay! And you know, again, you can hear how how hard they are. I mean, I can. Uh, twist them if I want and break them. I do not want to do that. <laughs> My boys actually love playing with these. They call them the ninja stars. <laughs> they will be like throwing them <laughs> until I catch them. So yeah, that's all there is to it. And then you just um, thread them with a with the with the twine, the, the fishing line. Yeah. And if you want, you can put them together like this make like a, a little whoop -a set of them together or just make one and one to hang up and actually it's quite handy that we already um, put our pins here because the pins the the marking from the pins is quite perfect to put the twine in in between and you see this one actually I did differently I didn't do the little knob I just did three Sing, uh, three chains here, didn't do the, the slip stitch there. So that's another option for you. But yeah, there you go. This will be a set as well. These here. Opa. Oh, I'm impatient. Oop. These two are go together. Mm, nice gift. And I love hanging this in the window. Oh, and then they just swirl and twirl and well there's that it's so simple and so easy and such fun and you get this really proper finished product that is a great gift and you know to send a bit of love and light and midsummer night some to your friends and loved ones i hope you have fun making these you guys and please ta do tag me if you if you post some pics of your mosaic stars i can't wait to see them Mwah! Ciao, ciao!